Hello, my name is Nazir Khan from the Faculty of Civil Engineering Technology, and I will be presenting to you um, summation of moments. To do that, I have created a, a, a problem where I'm going to solve for the reactant forces at these locations to demonstrate summation of moments. So, for me to demonstrate uh, summation of moments, I have to solve for the reactant forces at these supports. Now, when we look at this particular um, example, we have a roof truss system and we have two types of supports that are here. We have a pin support which is associated with one horizontal and one vertical force and we have a roller support which is associated with one force a perpendicular to the base. Okay. We also have a mass of 125 kilograms that we have to convert into a force by multiplying by 9.81 meters per second squared and we also have an angular force which we are going to resolve to its components to its horizontal and vertical component okay and that will enable us to do summation of moments using uh, the equilibrium equations we are going to be able to solve for the two reactant force here and the one reactant force there okay the first thing that we have to do is create an FBD of this uh, particular uh, section okay and an FBD have uh, it really means free body diagram what it means is I'm gonna cut this uh, roof truss system away from its support and replace the support with forces there are certain other qualities about an FBD which uh, we will discuss right away now with an FBD you always have to have a label because uh, depending on what project you're working on you could be uh, using several FBDs meaning that uh, you always have to label them so that you know which one uh, belongs to which uh, which calculation so you need to to label your FBD in this case FBD of A to D A B C and D right there okay so I have labeled the FBD I've converted the mass 125 kilogram mass multiplied by 9.81 meters per second squared I've converted it to 1226 newtons okay I'm gonna go and replace these um, these supports with forces the appropriate number of forces of course the pin support again one horizontal one vertical and the roller support one vertical force it's perpendicular to the base okay so we now have one two and three unknowns okay three forces that we have to solve for remember that all forces have to have the four characteristics of a force a magnitude in this case this one it has a direction of horizontal a sense that's going to the right which is the arrowhead and a point of application which is point A so each one of these force have the four components of a force okay the next thing that I I will do is I'm gonna resolve this angular force here and that is uh, breaking it down to its component one horizontal one vertical now this angular force happens to be in standard position so anytime it's in standard position the uh, trigonometric function for the horizontal will be cos so 835 cos 30 degrees will give you 723 newtons and then we have 835 sine 30 degrees which will give you 417.5 newtons right there Okay. You should check those to see with Pythagoras theorem to see that you come back to 835 uh, newtons. So now we, we have resolved the angular. We are ready to do calculations at this point. We have created a successful FBD diagram. We've labeled them. We've resolved the forces. We've converted the mass into a force. We have replaced the supports with the appropriate number of forces. And we are ready to do our calculation. Now we're going to use the equilibrium equations to actually solve for our um, our reactant forces now there are three equilibrium equations the first one is summation of moment about point A counterclockwise rotation is considered to be positive is equal to zero okay that means clockwise rotation is considered to be negative anytime that you do calculations with forces you have to use a sign convention when you're doing the calculation after you've uh, 
completed your calculation, you could remove the sign convention with a, a direction or so, but uh, during the calculation period, you have to use your sign convention. The sign convention for moment is all, always counterclockwise is positive. When we look at summation of forces in the x direction, summation of forces in the x direction, where forces acting to the right is positive, is equal to zero, is our second equilibrium equation. And then we have a third one, summation of forces in the y direction, where forces acting up is equal positive, is equal to zero. Okay, so we have the three equilibrium equations. Now, keep in mind that because we have three equilibrium equations, we could actually solve for three unknowns. We have one, two, three unknowns. So that means that we are okay. We don't have four unknowns, else we would have to use uh, different techniques. But uh, we are still good with uh, three unknowns and three equations. Each one of the equations, you could use one time for each FBD. Only one time you could use it. And uh, you will see that as we go through this particular problem. This is a, a smaller diagram so that uh, when we're doing the calculation you could keep your eye and you could visualize on how the calculations are done by looking at the diagram. The first thing that I'm going to do is use summation of moment. Remember that moment is really a turning force about a point of application. It is sometimes referred to as a torque. Right? So when we look at this, um, if, if I were to push this force on point A, it wouldn't create a turning force. It would just push point A vertically up and likewise. So anytime that you have a force going through a point of application, it does not create a moment. Okay? It does not create a moment. So that is the point that I'm going to pick to do summation of moments because it eliminates, it eliminates two unknown. And then I could solve for by over here. Okay, so if I do summation of moments right here at A, it eliminates two unknowns. So when you're picking a location to do moments, you should pick a location that you're eliminating as many unknown as possible. Okay, let's, uh, let's do summation of moments. Let's see how many forces will actually create moments so we could know how many terms are going to be in, in our equation. We know that this one is going to create a turning force. This one will create a turning, turning force. We have one here that's going to create a turning force. This one will create a turning force and this one. So we have two, four, five forces that will create turning force. So if I were to go and do summation of moments, I'm going to have five terms in my equation. Summation of moments about point A is equal to zero. This all here is going to be equal to zero because this is the summation of moments. Let's go and see how we get these numbers now. When we look at uh, point A and we look at uh, BY, I know that the number for BY is already in because I calculated it here, but this is, this is actually BY that's acting up. If you push on this, what will it do to point A? Well, it will turn point A counterclockwise, so that makes it a positive moment, right? So BY moment is equal to force, which is the, the, the label of BY, times the distance to the uh, line of action of that force, from the point of application to the line of action. Now, if, if you're looking at the line of action of this force, it's acting vertically up in this direction. The perpendicular distance from point A to there is 2.5 plus 2.5, this is five. So if I were to go, 5 times by, that would be my first moment, 5 by, and it's going positive because it'll turn point A counterclockwise. It'll cause a turning motion of counterclockwise. The next uh, force that I went with is the 723, and the line of action of that is right, like an arrow shoots right across there, so we need the distance from here to that line of action. So we have 723 times 3, and that's going to create a counterclockwise rotation, which is positive. 723 times 3. Okay. The next one that we have is um, 1226, which is the mass. And when you look at how this force is acting, it'll create 
a clockwise rotation of point A, and that is considered to be a negative uh, moment. So we have 1226 times the distance to the line of action, the line of action, which happens to be 2.5. So 1226 times 2.5 in the negative direction, right there. Okay. Uh, the next one that I went for is this particular force here, this vertical force, and that would be uh, 417.5. And again, the line of action is right in line with the 1226. So multiply by 2.5 in the minus direction, right there. And the last force that we need is the 300 uh, Newton force times a distance to the line of action, to the line of action of five. So, and that would cause a clockwise rotation, which makes that negative. Now we have these two won't create moments. So we have two forces here, three forces, four forces, five forces. We should have five terms. One, two, three, four, and five equal to zero. Okay. Then you go and uh, just uh, do crunch the numbers on these, and you will get uh, 2169, 3065, 1044, 1500 equals zero. You add up the numbers, you'll get 3440. It's a minus 3440. I'm going to take that to the other side, which makes it plus, divide by five, which will give you 688 Newton. And because this turned out to be a positive number, it means that our assumption. <clears throat> our assumption of by acting up is correct. If this was a minus in here, that means our assumption of by acting up was incorrect. We had to make it going down. Okay, so now we have solved for by, and that's why this 688 is in place right now. So anytime that you solve for whatever um, quantity, reactant force or anything like that, you always update your FBD. Okay. We have used the summation of moments. We can't use that equation again. We have to use one of the other one. Let's go and use summation of forces in the y direction because we have this. We have one in the y direction that we are. We have an unknown there, and we're going to use that uh, summation forces in the y direction. Right here is equal to zero. Acting up is positive. All force acting up will be positive. We see that we have a y. The number has popped in here already, but a y is a label at this particular point. It's acting up, so we have positive a y. We have uh, six eighty eight, which is b y. Well, we have a number for b y now, so that's acting up also. That's positive. We have three hundred. It's acting down. It'll be minus, and then we have this. 417.5 acting down also and the last force that we have is the uh, from the mass it is 1226 acting down so that's equal to zero we have in the vertical direction one two three four forces five forces right so one two three four and five terms equal to zero crunch the numbers and you will solve for e our AY is equal to 1256 Newton acting up. I'm going to update my FBD right there. Okay. Last, uh, last force that has to be uh, dealt with is the AX force. We have used summation moments. We have used summation forces in the Y direction. We only have summation forces in the X direction, that equation that we could use now. Let's go and use that. We have two forces in the X direction one right here and one right here. This one is going positive, that one is going negative. So AX is equal to AX minus uh, 723 Newtons is equal to zero. So we have two forces, two terms equal to zero. Take that over the equal sign, change the sign of it from minus to plus. That means we made the, um, the right assumption for AX and AX is now equal to 723 Newtons acting to the right. And that is how you use moment to solve for reactant force, right? Uh, again, just so that we have a little bit of a summary, 
of how to use moment I chose a point of application that eliminates as many unknowns as possible when a force is going through or through a point of application when a force is going through a point of application then it's not turning that point but it's pushing the point so it's not a moment it's not a torque it is uh, so the moment right there for these two force will be absolutely zero I went and uh, solve for by so moment is equal to force the force is represented by because by is unknown it's represented by a label and the perpendicular distance to the line of action of that force would be 2.5 plus 2.5 and you multiply those two together that is the representation of that when we look at uh, the next force that I, I went and look at I went and look at this positive force because it's going to create a counterclockwise rotation about point A 723 times the perpendicular distance to the line of action the line of action is right there so it'll be 3 3 times 723 and that's where it is with a positive rotation when we look at uh, this force here if we look at how this would rotate at point A well it would be a clockwise rotation which is a negative rotation so this number times 2.5 which is the line of action right here in negative direction it's right there the next force that I looked at was this uh, vertical force of uh, 417.5 and again that's the same line of action so 417.5 times 2.5 in the negative direction right there the next force is the 300 Newton force and that's gonna rotate in a negative direction because it's going clockwise again the perpendicular distance to the line of action is 2.5 plus 2.5 which is 5 right there and then you crunch the numbers and solve for by you'll get 688 for by I hope that uh, this presentation helps you with your your studies and uh, if you care to leave a comment that would be nice. Uh, I know that somebody is watching the video. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening. Bye bye.